First of all, it is necessary to comprehend the meaning of our studies and their fundamental objective. Indeed, we need to leave the condition in which we find ourselves, since this terrestrial humanity is abnormal, unbalanced, we need to comprehend this. The psyche of the intellectual animal, mistakenly called human, is altered. As a consequence or corollary of all of this, we can state that the entire terrestrial humanity is mentally, psychically, and volitionally unbalanced. I want you to understand that during the times of the Lemurian continent, when humanity still did not possess the abominable Kundabuffer organ, all people were balanced, and they lived in harmony and peace. Yet, an unexpected event occurred as a result of the erroneous calculations of certain sacred individuals, the comet Condor collided with the planet Earth. Then, as consequence of that collision, a frightful catastrophe was produced. Some gigantic islands, better said, quasi-continents, that were densely populated, sank into the ocean, and millions of human beings perished. The earth was in a chaotic state, leaving the geological layers in an unstable situation. Therefore, the layers trembled incessantly. Great earthquakes and frightful tsunamis were produced, and since the equilibrium of the geological layers was lost, there was no stability in our world and human life threatened to disappear. During that age, some sacred individuals came to the earth. I want to emphatically mention the Archangel Sakaki and his Most High Commission, consisting of a group of specialists. These individuals studied the problem and decided that in order to stabilize the geological layers of our world, it was necessary to implant the abominable Kundabuffer organ in our humanity. It is obvious that the physical body is a machine that captures specific types of cosmic energies that are soon transformed and retransmitted to the interior layers of the Earth. Yes, the Earth is nourished, because the Earth is a living organism that needs nourishment, nutrition. Therefore, when that alteration to the human organisms was allowed, the cosmic forces were also altered and became lunar. It so happened then, that from the coccyx, the fundamental bone of the dorsal spinal, the sacred fire was precipitated downward, and in its turn such a precipitated fire developed the inferior part of the dorsal spine, thus causing to grow from the coccyx, the base of the spinal column, an appendix similar to the tail that we see in the simians. Tailed organisms are fundamentally lunar. So, the lunar forces stabilized the geological layers of our planet Earth. Nevertheless, a certain miscalculation happened in the procedures of the Archangel Sakaki and his Most High Commission when they allowed the Kundabuffer organ to be kept in the human being beyond the normal, objective time calculations. Thus, time passed, and during later periods when the chief common universal archphysicist Seraphim Angel Lusos came to the Earth, he became aware of such miscalculations. Since these sacred individuals know how to maneuver the cosmic energies and have power over life and death, by maneuvering the forces of the cosmos, they in fact managed to begin the process of terminating the Kundabuffer organ, thus managing to destroy such an organ totally. Even still, until this day, a little bone exists at the base or inferior part of the dorsal spine that is even known in medicine as the tail, which is a diminutive they call it little tail, thus, indeed, truly, a residue of the abominable Kundabuffer organ still remains in the anatomy of the human body. Once the Kundabuffer organ was eliminated, by close observations, it could be clearly verified that the abominable consequences of such an organ remained within the five cylinders of the organic machine. These five cylinders are Intellectual, situated in the brain Emotional, situate in the heart Motor, superior part of the dorsal spine Instinctual, inferior part of the dorsal spine Sexual genitalia. 
The evil consequences of the abominable Kundabuffer organ remain within these five aforementioned centers. There are two more centers in the human being. They are of a superior type, the superior emotional and superior mental. These were not affected. Nonetheless, the harmful psychic elements remained deposited within the machine. These elements are the psychic aggregates, in other words we would say, the eyes. In Egypt, they were called the red demons of Seth. Anyhow, such aggregates, even when they are invisible to the physical eyes, are visible to the sense of psychological self-observation. Indubitably, the essence, that is, the consciousness of the being, was bottled up or encapsulated within such aggregates, living personification of our psychological types of defects, namely, anger, greed, lust, envy, pride, laziness, gluttony, etc. Regrettably, over time, these aggregates became stronger and stronger. Thus, indeed, nowadays, the essence of the human being, which is the liveliest, the most decent element that we have within our interior, is conditioned by the psychic aggregates, since it is bottled up. There is something more that is bottled up, the mental or manasic essence, and our will, etc. Thus, in these conditions, each one of us is a multiplicity, not an individuality. This is why in the Christic Gospel of Mark, Jesus of Nazareth asked the man with an unclean spirit, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Mark 5 verse 9, Thus, each one of us is Legion. It is also stated in the Gospel of Luke. And it came to pass afterward that he, the great Kabir Yeshua ben Pander, went throughout every city and village, preaching and shewing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him, and certain women, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. Luke 8 verses 1 and 2 These seven devils inevitably personify the seven capital sins. There is no doubt that these seven multiply into many evil spirits, yet in the biblical gospel only the main seven are cited. Nevertheless, we must also remember Virgil, the poet from Mantua, when he said, No, not if I had a hundred mouths, a hundred tongues, and throats of brass, inspired with iron lungs, I could not half those my horrid crimes describe, nor half the punishments those crimes have met. Virgil, the Aeneid, Book 6. Those were the words of the master of the Florentine Dante. They invite us to reflection. Therefore, having the consciousness, the will, and even the mental essence bottled up within the aggregates, inevitably we are conditioned in the consciousness, in the will, and even in the mental psychic field. For such cause I emphatically say that this terrestrial humanity is imbalanced. We know well that the red demons of Seth that personify our many selves quarrel amongst themselves, they do not have concordance or harmony whatsoever. When one of them emerges, he imposes himself to achieve control of the organic machine, the rest of them fight for supremacy. And finally the one who for some moments achieved the dominion of the brain soon falls in order to leave the place to any other. When looking at these things from all of these angles, we can evidence that we do not have a single mind, but thousands of minds that contradict, that discuss amongst themselves. Thus, we do not have a defined will. A permanent ego does not exist within us, but thousands of wills. We can evidence that our essence is turned asunder into pieces, shaken by the storms of inferior emotions, in a word, we are abnormal creatures. I invite you to think a little. Let us observe a jealous man, how can we call him sane when his jealousy transforms a flea into a horse? 
Yet if the woman is the jealous one, she cannot see with tranquility her man next to another woman, or him conversing very quietly with her, and vice versa, since the same happens with the males. Behold the attitudes that the jealous ones take, what quarrels! Those who are very jealous suffer because of a simple glance, they are completely demented. Let us now observe a person filled with hatred, which is monstrous and abominable. He hates the entire world, he does not love anyone, he abhor everybody, and makes everybody abhor him. He is completely demented, and all of his actions are madness, there is no harmony within him. Let us observe an angry one, thundering with thunderbolts, striking others with his hands and feet, with his eyes out their sockets, he is completely demented. Let us examine the lustful ones, how abominable they turn out to be, what perverted attitudes they take, what filthy glances, they are abnormal. Let us observe the avaricious ones, their disarranged physiognomy, the eyes of the avaricious ones are unmistakable, their actions, their preceding manners, namely, hiding the money and even suffering from hunger since they do not want to spend, to that end, they are crazy, demented ones. Therefore, truly, I tell you that the people of the planet Earth are demented, mentally imbalanced. What is worse is that they are not aware that they are mentally imbalanced. They believe they are using their mental faculties perfectly. They can only become aware of their mental imbalance the day they are no longer mentally imbalanced. Nobody can become perfectly mentally equilibrated so long as he continues with the ego, the I, alive. Therefore, equilibrium is achieved by eliminating all of those psychic aggregates that in their conjunction constitutes the ego, the I, the myself, the self-willed. There is no doubt that the people of the earth would not even remotely accept that they are mentally imbalanced, nevertheless, they are. Was the First World War a matter for sane people? Was the Second World War a matter for sane people? Was the launching of the atomic bomb over Hiroshima and Nagasaki a matter for sane people? Listen, only a mad person could do that. Only demented people would dare to do that. Yes, mentally imbalanced people. Thus, indeed, truly, we propose to eliminate those psychic aggregates that we carry within our interior and which make us abnormal people. How can we achieve this? Through what methods? It is obvious that psychological self-observation is necessary in order to achieve it. Thus, when one admits that one possesses their particular, individual psychology, in fact, one begins to self-observe, and when one self-observes, one is discovering oneself, and self-revelation exists in every self-discovery. Nevertheless, we need to perform psychological self-observation in a continuous manner, from instant to instant, from moment to moment. The defects that we carry within flourish while in relation with our acquaintances, in the factory, in the country, in our house, and if we self-observe, we see them. A discovered defect must be submitted to the inner self-reflection of the being. It is urgent to comprehend them in all of the levels of the mind. Thus, when a defect has been properly comprehended, we need to eliminate it. We must apprehend the complete differentiation between comprehension and elimination. To comprehend is not enough. We need to eliminate. I.e. Anyone can comprehend that he has the defect of lust, yet this does not signify that he has eliminated it. Anyone can comprehend that he has the defect of revenge, yet this does not signify that he has eliminated it. The mind by itself cannot alter any defect. A power superior to the mind is necessary. Fortunately, such a power exists in a latent manner within our interior. I want to emphatically refer to Devi Kundalini Shakti, 
the Divine Cosmic Mother, she is a variant of our being. She is our being, but a derivative, a derivation, I learned this precisely from her, herself. On a certain occasion in Tibet, I interrogated my Divine Mother Kundalini as follows. You and I look like two different beings, nonetheless, we are the same being. Answer, yes, my son, we are the same being, but derivatives. Thus, this must be understood. She is Mara, Isis, Adonia, Insobertha, Ray, Sibylle, Astarte, Diana, Tenanson, etc. She is the igneous serpent of our magical powers. Thus, when the devotee invokes her, she then assists him. Obviously, she has the power to eliminate any given psychological defect. Undoubtedly, those who work in the flaming forge of Vulcan can invoke her precisely in those moments in which the lingam yoni of the Greek mysteries are found properly connected. She, reinforced by the transcendental sexual electricity, rapidly disintegrates any given aggregate that has been previously comprehended. Those who do not yet work in the forge of the Cyclops can invoke her during their meditation, and she will assist them by disintegrating their psychological aggregates. I clarify, one can eliminate 100% of one's psychic aggregates in the work that one performs in the forge of the Cyclops, yet, when one is not working in the flaming forge of Vulcan, one can eliminate 25 or 30% of the aggregates. So, by all means, without this annular serpentine power that develops in the body of the Gnostic ascetic, the absolute pulverization of the undesirable psychic elements that we carry within would not be possible. What I am talking about is transcendental. We need to work on ourselves if we truly want to change and become normal individuals. It is necessary to understand that the disintegration of the undesirable elements is always very difficult. Regardless, those sacred individuals who made such a mistake because of their erroneous calculations indeed inflicted a great harm upon us, thus they have to pay their debts in future Mahamanvantaras in accordance with the law of Nemesis. It is necessary to understand that when the psychic aggregates appeared within our organic nature as an outcome of the abominable Kundabuffer organ, they were processed within our psyche in accordance with the law of seven. Due to this, the total disintegration of all the undesirable psychic elements that we carry within our interior is frightfully difficult. Let us take into account, in order to be more clear, that these elements process themselves in seven levels of the being. Some saints achieve the elimination of aggregates in two or three or four levels, or even five, yet those who have achieved the elimination of those aggregates in all seven levels of the being are very rare. Therefore, we face a very difficult work. If you believe that it is possible to achieve final liberation by means of another way, listen, you are absolutely wrong. I am widely illustrating this theme for you so that you can understand that these studies are the reason for us to be gathered here. Obviously, we need to know our purpose in gathering ourselves here, in these studies, and for what. If curiosity is the simple motive that moves you, listen, there are many things to be curious about, i.e. in central city entertainment centers, in cinemas, the bulls in the arena, etc. Yet, to enter into these studies is something very serious, because to reduce the psychic aggregates to cosmic dust within the seven levels of the being is not a very simple task. Indeed, to emancipate the essence, to disembottle the mind and will, is not an easy task. The mind in itself is a substance, it is the monus, yet it is bottled up within the aggregates, and therefore, it has become not one mind but many minds, thousands of minds. Each psychic aggregate has its own mind, and since we have thousands of aggregates, then thousands are the minds that we have. Truly, we have 10,000 psychic aggregates that we need to turn into dust and which process themselves in seven levels. 
In esotericism, the psychic aggregates are denominated whales. In the Old Testament in the Bible, it is stated, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. 2 Samuel 18 verse 7 It is necessary to know how to understand this. A short time ago I visited a Mayan palace in Cancun, which has 10,000 crosses of St. Andrew. So, let us be understood that to pulverize 10,000 aggregates is not an easy task. Thus, if you are willing to perform this task, I congratulate you. Yet, if you are not willing, listen, the submerged devolution within the bowels of the earth is waiting for you. Because if you cannot do it, the earth can. Yes, if you are not capable, the laws of nature are capable. If you do not do the work, the laws of nature will do it for you down there, within the infernal worlds. I do not advise you to devolve within the bowels of the submerged mineral kingdom, since the laws are frightfully multiplied there, thus the sufferings are terrible, until the second death. Thereafter, at the last instant the essence, having suffered a lot, becomes free, and it emerges again to the surface of the earth in order to initiate new evolving processes. It is preferable that you perform the work here and now, because now you are before a dilemma, whether you do it or not. If you do it, marvelous, you will then be free, yet if you do not do it, nature will take care of such a work within the bowels of the world. Such is the crude reality of the facts. Nevertheless, I know the earthlings very well. Thus, you might think that these are just conceptions of my intellect, yet truly I tell you that this is not a matter of lucubrations of the mind. I am talking about facts. Since I am an awakened individual due to the fact of having reduced my ego to cosmic dust, it is obvious that I know about the submerged devolution within the bowels of the earth. So, it is preferable to work upon ourselves here and now. I talk to you about facts. I talk to you about what I have seen and heard, about what is factual in a direct manner to me. Reflect. We are gathered here in order to study. You have come here in order to listen, and I have come to talk to you in a frank manner. We need to become serious, otherwise failure awaits us. Regrettably, it is very difficult to find serious people, since the great majority are playing. Today they are in a little school and tomorrow in another, and after tomorrow in another, and likewise they live playing. They are not serious. If you think that you can find something outside of yourselves, listen, you are mistaken. The one who does not find the truth within himself will never ever find it outside of himself. Thus reflect, become serious, work upon yourselves, transform yourselves, because this is what is fundamental. Inverential Peace